Welcome to part four of our review of Crew of Three Mechanics. In this video, we're gonna break down reverse rotations, also known as push mechanics. This will be the last video in the series and we'll round out your knowledge to give you a basic understanding for Crew of Three Mechanics. Hey everyone, Patrick Farber from GHSA Baseball Umpire Development and Umpire Classroom, where we help umpires develop their knowledge and skills. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and check out our new podcast, The Pre-Game, wherever you get your podcasts. Also, for our new umpires, you can check out the Umpire 101 course at umpireclassroom.com. Now, let's focus on the push mechanic. A push mechanic has the potential to occur anytime we have at least one runner in scoring position and U3 is in the middle. Now, there are a couple of ways to pre-pitch signal this, which could include rotating a fist with your pinky and thumb out or moving it back and forth in the direction of your partner. It doesn't really matter how you do it, just make sure you've reviewed it in your pregame and that your crew is prepared to do it and understand it when the game begins. The concept of the push mechanic is that U1 will take the batter runner all the way to second base. All other runners will be the responsibility of U3. So when U1 comes in to take the batter runner, he or she needs to verbally communicate to their partner to push or slide. This is extremely important because U3 will go into the cutout at third to get out of the way of a play on the batter runner at second base. This slide is important so that the crew can avoid a double call at second. Now, when U3 starts at third base and U1 starts in the middle, which will only occur with less than two outs and a runner on second or runners on second and third, when that occurs and no one goes out, U1 will take off plays at first and second, U3 will have third, and the plate umpire stays home. If U3 does go out, then it reverts to a crew of two, and U1 takes all bases while the plate umpire remains at home. Now, I wanna circle back to one of the more confusing scenarios, which is when we have a runner on third base only. With a runner on third base only and a clean hit to the outfield, U1 will take the touch of first, while U3 comes in and has all plays on the batter runner at second and third. Because a runner started the play in scoring position, there is no rotation for the plate umpire up to third. Now let's discuss fly ball coverage with a runner at third base only and a ball hit to the right side of the field. If the ball goes to the right side and will be routine, then U1 will come in and take the batter runner at first and second. We do this because then U3 can line up the tag by R3 at third base. Now this becomes very difficult when U1 goes out on a trouble ball. In that scenario, U3 needs to head into the working area as quickly as possible because they'll have all plays at first, second, and third. And since U3 is running in, then the plate umpire takes the tag up at third, just like he or she would in a crew of two. And with third base occupied, if U3 goes out, then we have a similar scenario. U1 has to get into the working area quickly so that they can have all plays at all bases and again, the plate umpire will have the tag up at third base. So there you go. In four videos, we covered the crew of three basics. I can guarantee you we didn't cover every little detail. And don't be shocked if someone on your crew or an evaluator has a different way they want to run the crew. That's not a big deal, so long as you make sure in your pregame that you're on the same page. Building on top of that, it's important that for your entire game, you and your crew need to communicate extensively. This includes pre-pitch signals and verbal communication throughout the play, especially as we rotate and push. If you're starting to head somewhere, we need to be loud so the entire crew recognizes the rotation and push. This can be especially important when you're working with umpires who don't run a crew of three regularly and may need a push in the right direction. And on that note, for our umpires and especially experienced umpires, you have to be prepared to save the crew at any time. So every play, pick up where your partners are and where they are going. If you see a coverage hole developing, you must prepare to fill that hole. Yes, this can include the plate umpire needing to cover a play at second. It's far less than ideal, but it's better that at least the plate umpire is there versus no umpire is there. Of course, if your partner incorrectly rotates and you find them coming to your base and they're going to make a call, make eye contact with them and confirm who's going to take the play. At the end of the day, a single, potentially incorrect call is a lot easier to handle than two umpires making opposite calls on the same play. Thanks so much for going through the series, reviewing your crew of three mechanics. 
If you have any questions that weren't covered or any advice that you'd like to include in the series, leave your thoughts in the comments so we can help others cover the gaps. Of course, subscribe to our channel and if you're a new umpire and looking for training for yourself or your association, check out our website at umpireclassroom.com. As always, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the field.